I've been involved with yoga for some 40 years. What would I now say to my younger self? If you approach yoga without first understanding the true nature of being and the aim of yoga, then yoga practice only reinforces the old pattern of ego identification, which is the cause of suffering and conflict. Okay, then what is the true nature of being? What is the aim of yoga? And what is yoga? Let's begin with what is yoga? The word yoga means union. And just as the menu is not the meal, the definition of a term is not the thing itself. This is especially true regarding yoga because of its experiential nature. Can you help me understand the experiential nature of yoga? Yes, with some help from Patanjali, who is said to be the father of yoga, and we can answer your other questions along the way. Patanjali gives the definition of yoga and speaks of its experiential nature in the first four of his Yoga Sutras. Patanjali's first four Yoga Sutras are Now Yoga Yoga is the cessation of the whirl of mental filtering and conceptualizing. Then there is true being which is seeing as clarity, insight, or wisdom. Otherwise, seeing is distorted or veiled by the activity of the mind. I don't see union from what is said in these sutras. Where is that? Yoga's union is freedom, from the pairs of opposites, which are generated by mental activity. Yoga's union includes and transcends the pairs of opposites without self-contradiction. For example, there are times when your mind is silent. At these times, there is no discontinuity to being, and there is no mental activity of labeling experience as sound and silence. In this light, it can be said that yoga is silence, which is not the opposite of sound. And the experience of mental silence also reveals that it is the mental activity of defining and conceptualizing experience that causes the pairs of opposites, as duality and the appearance of separation. In this light, it is clear that as soon as you define me, you also define not me. The experiential understanding of yoga does not negate the functional practicality of defining and labeling things, because it happens in the light of understanding that the menu is not the meal. Okay, I see that yoga is experiential. And that essentially that means a silent mind. I see many folks practicing yoga postures. Where or what part of yoga is that? Again, Patanjali can help us. Although he only speaks of posture in three of his 196 sutras, he does state the role of posture clearly. Patanjali says, The posture asana or pose, where yoga flowers, is still and comfortable. The art of perfecting the posture is being relaxed, yet alert, such that alignment is attitude that fosters clarity. The outcome of perfecting the posture is freedom from the pairs of opposites, and there is abiding as the true nature of being. Thanks. Namaste. Oh, by the way, 
How does all this turn out? Do I get enlightened, self-realized, or something truly cool? Seeing is doing. Yoga practice and all of life is governed by the experience of seeing with the mind and seeing through the mind. Seeing with the mind is distorted or veiled by the filter of knowledge and past experience. Then doing is reaction that is strugglesome and the cause of conflict. Seeing through the mind is yoga. This is clarity, whereby appropriate action unfolds naturally. This is the aim of yoga. It is knowing yoga by being yoga. Namaste.